Thank you all for coming today. I, I don't always wear awesome hockey jerseys like this, but uh, for tonight, I felt it was appropriate. Uh, before I get started, though, we do have uh, one person to thank. I have my beautiful wife, Whitney, in the audience with us tonight, and I have to say thank you for all your uh, support and really just tolerance in my thousands of hours spent at the rinks and endless pursuit of hockey adventures, so thank you. So with that, <laughs> so with that, let's get started. So I've been obsessed with hockey since I was born, since before I, I can remember. I grew up it, learning to skate as soon as I could walk in Minnesota. I continued playing on through my youth in Chicago and was fortunate enough to play through, uh, through college until I moved out to Bozeman here and still to this day I play in the adult leagues. But my teammates will tell you I'm a better coach than a player. Uh, my coaching experience wildly has taken me all over the world. I've been very fortunate to go to places like Namibia, Africa and spend a year coaching the game that I love and sharing that passion with other players uh, in non-traditional hockey markets all over the world, as, as our host mentioned. Um, but one place I never expected hockey to take me to was here. This is Ladakh, India, overlooking the city of Leh in the Himalayas, just uh, outside the border of, of India and Tibet. And so beneath us, the city of Leh, surrounded by palaces, monasteries, it's an entirely different cultural experience that I never imagined hockey would bring me to. But this is the city of Leh, the town center. And in the city of Leh, in the winter, on outdoor natural ice, there are over 2,000 hockey players. And this rink is at 11,000 feet. To reference, that's about the same, uh, same height as Lone Peak. So in my experience in Ley, we had an opportunity to play uh, exhibition games. My, my uh, teammates from all over the world, all over Europe and Scandinavia and Russia were in the blue. Members of the uh, men's Indian national team were in the red jerseys, and we had a, a chance to have an exhibition game, get used to the ice, enjoy the experience of the game that we all loved. And with me was my younger brother. Now, John and I had the opportunity after the game to take this photo, and we were kind of reveling in the fact that here we are in India in the Himalayas, surrounded by, you know, we could hear Buddhist monks in the background, surrounded by palaces, monasteries, got three fans going crazy in the background. It was, <laughs> it was an electric atmosphere. It was a great experience. Uh, but I also had the opportunity to coach while I was there. And so one of the highlights of my trip was working with the Indo-Tibetan Border Police Team. Now, these these are all active duty military personnel protecting the Indian borders, and on their off days, they practice hockey. So I had the opportunity to run a couple of practices for them, but a highlight for me in that practice was getting to sit down, share a cup of tea for about an hour with their coach. And through a translator, the two of us exchanged drills, we talked power play, penalty kill, special teams. He taught me the proper way to drink tea while going over a whiteboard with plays. Um, but it was, a, it was a very bonding experience with two people that loved, loved hockey. Um, but we weren't there just there to play hockey. We were also there, I was with the group, the Hockey Foundation. It's a nonprofit. One of our, our big missions is to promote inclusion and empowerment of young girls through the game of hockey. And so these are examples of girls through donated gear were given the opportunity to play right alongside the boys on the ice in the, uh, in the area of Ladakh. And those young girls, some of them grow up to be this girl that they had the opportunity to play on the Indian national team. And what we found is these, these, these young girls that became involved with hockey over the years demonstrated higher rate, uh, literacy rates, higher graduation rates. And they also had the experiences of traveling the world with the national, national team that they otherwise wouldn't have get to experience. But part of why we were there was to play a game at the highest elevation ever played. So in those trucks, are all of our hockey gear and boards and all, everything we needed for the game, and that mountain pass is over 18,000 feet. So it was a journey, it was a, it was a journey. But what we accomplished once we got there was this. We built uh, a regulation ice rink, lines, regulation boards, IIHF sanctioned referee, uh, at the highest elevation a rink has ever been placed. It was at just over 14,000 feet, and we, we attempted a Guinness Book of World Records game at the highest elevation. So as the game started, you can see this was our, our, our accommodations at the rink. This is uh, basically our locker room. This was a wall tent. We had an ice floor. It was about negative 20 degrees out. Um, but the excitement was so great that everybody looked past the cold. We couldn't wait to get on the ice uh, and have what we were looking for as a record experience. But before we got on the ice, we had a traditional ceremonial escort to the rink. It's a little different than my normal escort to the rink when I'm going to play in the beer leagues here in Bozeman. But 
<laughs> the traditional attire was, was broken out and it was, a, it was a really great ceremony to start off the game. But once the game started, hockey was hockey. We, we all played hard, we competed hard. This, this photo is of the historic first goal in our record-breaking game. Uh, I was lucky enough to assist that goal, so I put my name on the score sheet, got to be part of the, the, part of the action. Um, but like I said, hockey's hockey. The, the red team skated hard, competed, but we had one difference to them. Between shifts, we, we had a doctor on the bench who was afraid that all of us flatlanders were gonna have a heart attack between shifts. So we, had, we literally were taking oxygen pulls after our 20 or, second, uh, 20 or 30 second shifts, uh, while the red team, the Indian national team, no problems at all. <laughs> so the game was concluded. We, we, we were all very excited to bond over the game of hockey, but also that we had officially made the record books of the Guinness Book of World Records for the highest elevation game of hockey ever played. So that was kind of the cherry on top of the trip, but there's some reasoning behind that game too. In performing this game, we were able to collect and donate over 100 sets of youth hockey gear to help grow the game in uh, the Ladakh region, as well as all of myself and everyone in included in the game uh, donated all of their gear that we wore and left it there to help grow the adult game as well. So in total, I think it was about 150 sets of gear we left in the region to grow the game. This was in Tangse. We stayed there for three days uh, to acclimate to the, before the game. But this is a reminder that travel does not always equal vacation. This is a negative 20 degree outdoor drop toilet that we had to uh, use while, while we were acclimating to the elevation. Uh, but with that, it was, a, it was a world record experience. Hockey has been a huge monumental part of my life. And now I have the privilege of skating here in Bozeman year round with uh, my young boys. And you know, hockey has taken me on, on many great adventures and I look forward to seeing where the game will take them and on their own journey here in the future. So thank you all for listening and I hope to see you all at the rink soon. <laughs>